Well, hey everybody, welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. I'm your host, Photo Joseph. You are watching the first live daily photography show on YouTube. And uh, I am in, in Florida, where am I? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I'm here for the Lumix Luminary Summit. That's the Panasonic uh, Luminary Summit every year. We come together, or we try to every year, come together as one to just kind of go through the latest tech and talk about what's happening in the industry and so on. And of course, the big thing this week, uh, well, today, yesterday, it's been a one day thing, was all about the GH5. Now today, there's a big national sales meeting for Panasonic. So we've been meeting with some of the retailers as well, which has been really cool. Meeting some folks from stores that I haven't been to before and seeing some familiar faces, places I have been. Overall, it's been, it's been a really interesting, really fun day. Um, so what I wanted to do today was yesterday, I took a bunch of notes of things that I didn't already know about the GH5. And I'm gonna go through some of these things and share them with you because I figure that might be interesting. But before we get into that, let's just see who's chatting here since I actually got the chat working. So let's see, I already said hi to Jess and Bubblegum Monsters and Burns Tech. So good to see you guys all here. Sully, hello, Ryan, good morning. And Dimitris, okay, you're in. And Jess and Mr. Burns Tech. Okay, now I'm getting some questions here. Everybody's saying hi. All right. Uh, Burns is saying, I'll have to use the lenses I have with my GH4 for now. I'll be saving up to get some newer lenses eventually. Yeah, you know, that is, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Whenever you're buying cameras, this is kind of one of those number one advice things that I give to people who are shopping for a camera, especially if they're changing platforms or buying their first camera or whatever. You know, whatever your budget is, whether it's $1,000 or $10,000, doesn't matter. Invest in glass, right? Your lenses will last for a very, very long time. If, as long as you don't break them, they should last basically forever. And that is, that is kind of awesome, right? I have, I have lenses, well, pre-Panasonic days, I have lenses that are really old. Uh, Panasonic ones, I've got some lenses that I've been using since I switched to Micro Four Thirds. But as long as you put some money into the good glass, that's, that's what really matters. And then you can keep using that glass throughout as you upgrade your bodies. And obviously, um, you know, obviously you're gonna trade out your bodies more often than you're gonna trade out your lenses. You know, occasionally like with the Lumix lenses now, there is going to be a Mark II. So for example, the 23 to 35 and the 35 to 100, they're both getting upgrades to Mark II. Now the Mark II upgrades are going to provide some nice thing. You're gonna get better image stabilization. It has the new IS-2. Uh, the other ones have an IS, I guess, level one. And that is gonna give you a, a little bit of a difference, but it's not a massive difference. The optics, the glass should be the same. Um, as we understand it, the glass is going to be the same. The weatherproofing, they're both weatherproofed. The new ones are freeze-proof. So if you're going to be doing a lot of sub-zero temperatures, then you might that might be worth upgrading for. But um, for the most part, if you've got a 12 to 35 and 35 to 100, you don't have to feel like you need to upgrade those. They're going to work perfectly fine on the GH5. So it's just one of those things to think about. Um, all right, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, Casper the Ghost is giving you news. Yes, that is correct. Casper is giving you news. It's funny, my live feed shows a still frame, but I guess you guys are seeing me. Soon we'll scroll down to the bottom. Yep, you guys are seeing me. Okay. And let's see here. Don't I live in Florida? I do not live in Florida. I live in Oregon. I'm just here for a couple of days. And yeah, if you're not seeing me, just do a refresh on the screen. Um, let's see, Bubblegum says, I got the 12 to 35 original, beautiful lens. Seamus not gonna get the firmware update now. That's right, but from Joseph as others says, it looks like for stabilization, it won't matter too much. Yeah, they're saying like maybe a half a stop difference between the one and the two with the GH5. So I think it's I think it's gonna be okay. I think you're gonna be fine. And let's see here. Uh, Jess says, I'm starting from scratch. I've, I'm almost convinced myself to get the GX8 to save money. Wonderful camera, love the GX8, but it doesn't do slow-mo, which is something I love. Uh, freeze proof is a plus. Uh, you know, there, there are advantages to the higher end bodies. If you're really high end on video, then the GH5 is the camera for video. Uh, keep in mind there's the autofocus difference as well. The autofocus engine is just off the hook amazing. Okay, Sean, good morning. Is everyone keeping their GH4 and adding the GH5? Great question for the audience out there. Uh, Burns Tech, when I got my GH4, I almost went with the GX series, but I really wanted the full feature set that the GH series offers. You pay a little bit more, but it's a higher end camera, and if you need it, it's absolutely worth those features. Um, gonna have to sell mine to keep the cost down. Nothing wrong with that as well. It's great if you can keep your GH4, have it as a B camera, but um, you know, if, if you can't, you can't. You gotta do what you gotta do. And it's just, it's awesome to be able to, to get your hands on this new tech. Uh, let's see here. Um, Dave's Nature Production says, I'm gonna see if I can trade in my GH4 with the GH5, plus I need a macro lens and the extra money will help. Yeah, there you go. That's some great macro lenses from Panasonic. Two of them, are there any third party? I'm not sure if there's any third party autofocus macro lenses out there. But the two from Panasonic, the, what is it, a 30 and a 45 millimeter, so a 60 and 90 millimeter equivalent. I've got both of them. They're both really, really nice lenses. 
Um, Dave's also saying, still thinking of getting the Leica 12 to 60. If it has less chromatic aberration than the 12 to 35, is this a shoot mostly video? Can't re really remove the CA in video. Uh, I don't know. It probably will, because it is a Leica lens, the 12 to 60, so it is going to be a higher end bit of glass. Um, but there is chromatic aberration removal in the GH5 that you can enable. I don't remember if that was in the GH4. And it's physically a larger lens, obviously you get a longer reach, but not as fast on the long end. Tough call. Honestly, it's a tough call. I've been shooting with the 12 to 60 for a week. I love it. It's it, The extra weight hasn't and size has not been bothering me. And the GH5 itself is a little bit bigger and heavier. So overall, it's just a bigger, heavier package, but that's still okay. It hasn't been a problem. Still been wearing it on the belt clip like I did with the GH4. Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet whether once I've got you know everything in my hands on a regular basis, if I'm still going to stick with that 12 to 6 or if I'm going to go back to the 12 to 35. I don't know because I, I, I really like that faster lens at the 70 millimeter range. And I, I did zoom in quite a bit. It, who knows? Tough call. Very tough call. Um, there's a new lens coming, which I posted a thing on Instagram, just a total teaser, just a straight on shot. I can't tell you what that is, but it's awesome. And let me tell you, for the the vlogging set, it's going to be bad. That's the lens I'm absolutely going to want. Okay. Uh, it's kind of cool to see the regulars coming around. Yes, it is. It's lovely to see you guys. Um, and then you're talking about GH5 amongst yourselves. That's so cool. 422 10-bit internal one of the top favorite features. Um, great. 180 FPS. Is it limited or unlimited? That's unlimited. Yeah. And also, um, I found out that 6K photo is also unlimited. It's, it, you know, it'll stop when you run out of space on your card or your battery dies. Um, let's see here. Royal Pictures says, I've heard that the GH5 will have buffer, which after 10 seconds of recording, 180 FPS will overload and record will stop. No, absolutely not. I shot longer than 10 second um, shots with the 180 FPS. So, no, it's fine. Is this backroom casting? <laughs> okay, I'm going to skip that comment. All right, have you guys watched the microphone test video? Yeah, do watch that if you haven't. Let's see, we'll, we'll, we'll link to that up there eventually. And um, anyone know something about this 180 FPS? I just answered that. And all right, let's, let's do this. Okay, let's get into the bits and the bits of information that I gathered. Okay, first one, this isn't specific to the GH5. This is one of those, I learned this tip and went, oh my God, this whole trip became just worthwhile for me. If you're a Lumix shooter, you know how you can program all the custom function buttons all over the camera? You gotta like, dig into the menus and find it. If you press and hold on any of the FN buttons for three seconds, it'll pop up a screen that'll allow you to choose a new function for it. Mind blown, crazy awesome. Okay. Uh, Where's, let's see here, some of this stuff is to skip. No, I no, can't talk about any of that. Um, okay, here's some things in general. So you, of course, they're building a new room next door. God. Uh, UHS-2 cards are supported. So for those of you that have the super fast new micro SD cards, UHS-2, that is, I mean, it should be obvious, but this is the second Lumix camera to support those. So you have that support. Um, let's see here. A lot of just taking notes on features. You know, the brand new sensor, we all know this. The joystick's a big deal. Um, five axis dual IS2, and that's gonna be fully compatible with the 12 to 35 28 Mark II, the 35 to 100 28 Mark II, the 12 to 60 Leica that I've been playing with. That's the new lens. And then there's two more Mark II lenses coming out the 45 to 200, which is an F4 to 5.6. And remember, these focal lengths, you gotta double them for your um, full frame equivalent. And then the 100 to 300, which I did see this week and uh, looks a little bit different, feels really nice. I haven't shot through it or looked through it, but I just held a mock-up or something in my hand. It, it felt really good, that 100 to 300. Um, and then there's the one that I can't tell you about that you were looking at the lens cap of. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, oh, this is really neat. I didn't realize this. I'd seen it in the camera, but didn't quite understand it uh, until it was explained to me in, in our training here. So you know you've got 6K photo mode and 4K photo mode. And if you're not familiar with this, the idea is in 6K photo mode, you're shooting essentially 6K video. And it's 6K because it's not 16 by 9. It's not your video aspect ratio. It's a 4-3 aspect ratio. And it does give you 6,000 pixels. And it's shooting video with the intention of extracting a still frame. And at 4K, you can shoot 30 frame per second video and extract an 18 megapixel still from that. So it's going to default to the 4.3 aspect ratio and it defaults to a higher shutter speed because it knows the point of this is to pull a still out. So for things like my um, like snowboarding, skateboarding, any kind of fast action where that moment is you know a, a hair's breadth of a moment, uh, this gives you a better opportunity to capture that. 4K photo mode does the same thing, but all the way up to 60 frames per second. And that from that, you can pull out an 8 megapixel still. 
anyway, so that's all super cool. But what I didn't know is that when you are when you extract a frame in the camera, so you're in the camera, you navigate through and you scroll to the frame that you, um, that you wanna pull out. When you pull it out, it will look at the frame before and the frame after and do some kind of fancy differencing algorithm to do noise removal. So even in low light, these things will look fantastic, which is really, really cool. Okay, um, let's see, a little more comments flying through, so we'll move on here. So there's that, and that's H.265, by the way. And oh, here's something else. A lot of people, a lot of people, a couple of people in the questions for the Big Sean interview asked about why H.265 isn't being used throughout the camera. Why is H.264 everywhere except for in 6K photo? And the answer Sean gave was partially technical, partially political, um, but I learned something in actually using H.265 that in my mind is the number one reason not to have it nothing freaking supports it, right? Final Cut Pro does not support uh, H.265. You cannot open H.265 in the Finder on a Mac. Premiere apparently does, um, as well as Media Encoder. However, I could not get Media Encoder to convert it. I basically got these files that I can't do anything with on the computer. So maybe, I, apparently in Premiere you can, but I, I, I'm not a Premiere user, so there's like one place that it's supposed to be able to use. You can download converters that'll just do a kind of a drag and drop conversion to H.264, but obviously you wouldn't want to have to do that for all the shots that you're working with. In the camera, it's got its built-in H.265 decoder so you can do what you got to do in there. But those files are really, really processor intensive to work with, so you would not want to have H.265 throughout. Probably not for another year or two when computers are generations faster than they are today. So H.265 may be really efficient, but it is not any, it's no fun to edit with on your computer. So just to throw that one out there. Um, mm, the menu help system. So for those of you who watched some of the menu uh, exploration videos I did, you, you may have seen that I discovered that when you click on uh, some of the gray menus, the ones that aren't available, it now tells you what, it tells you why it's not available. But that was only in some of the menus. I was, of course, working with an early firmware version, 0.5, with the 1.0 that will ship with the camera. Every grayed out menu is supposed to tell you why it's grayed out. So that's fantastic news. All right, uh, a little bit more about the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And, okay, so the... That's not annoying at all. How about, can you guys hear that badly, that knocking? I mean, there's nothing I can do about it, but um, hopefully it's not totally hideous. Um, Okay, so the camera, the GH5 has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. The Bluetooth is there to maintain a, uh, it's Bluetooth LE, BTLE. It's there to maintain a connection, basically a silent connection to your phone in the background. So this serves a couple of purposes. For one, it allows the connection to be maintained at a very, very low power cost so that when you do want to transfer a file and you kick on the Wi-Fi, it will do it very quickly. Now we haven't seen the new app yet, so I can't test it, but uh, that is the idea behind it. So Bluetooth LE connection to your phone. Now one of the things that we think is going to work, but we don't know, and this is one of those that, again, because we can't test it yet, we think that you'll be able to shoot wireless tethered to your phone or, or iPad even while it's locked. That's the key we don't know. Wireless tether is absolutely coming. That's absolutely part of it. We, we think you'll be able to do it while it's locked because of the Bluetooth LE connection, which allows a, a background connection. So we'll see. That would be really, really cool. So you could have your phone locked in your pocket, in your bag, whatever, shooting, and then you pull out your phone and everything you shot is already there. Or if you're on set with a client, you can connect to your iPad and it's wireless tethered to the iPad and they can be reviewing the shots as you go. That's kind of cool. So I'm, I'm really excited to see just how well this works, but that is something that is uh, gonna be a part of it. Uh, 6K photo, there's no time limit. I mentioned that earlier. Same question came up in 180 FPS. So that has come up before. There is no time limit. Okay, uh, I've got some notes on the autofocus system, but I've got something better for you. So I've, if you saw the videos, did we get into it? I don't remember. I don't think we even got into it in the video because we didn't get that far in the menu. But I've talked about the autofocus system before and how it's very, very customizable. It's a little confusing. The sliders, what they mean and how, how to... When I did all my shooting, I didn't really understand them. So I was kind of like, I'll try it here, try it there, see what happens. And they all work great. But now I know how to make it really, really good and where to dial this in. But instead of me explaining it to you, I did a little on camera with Matt Frazier, who's one of the Panasonic techs, and he went through the menus and explained exactly what they do, what each adjustment does and how to use it, why to use it, and so on. That video is already done. I will be uploading that today. And so you will have a second video today to make up for no video yesterday. That will be Matt Frazier explaining all of this. So that is going to be super cool. So you'll definitely want to watch that. Okay, uh, oh, and one of the demos, this is incredible. So he's demoing this, this whole, you don't see this on camera, but we did this in the training. He's explaining the whole high-speed autofocus, how it works, how to set it, and so on. And one of the demos that he does, is he sets it, the focus in a particular way. 
takes the camera and about like this far away from a person, just takes the camera and holds down the high shutter speed and goes like this. And then you look at it and every single picture is in focus. It's that good. Okay, uh, let's see here, next. This is a menu item that's in the GH5. I thought it was in the GH4 as well, but I couldn't find it. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's not in GH4, maybe it's in other cameras. But there is a setting, and you might already know this, but there's a setting called lens position resume, and on or off. And I had always thought that that had to do with zoom position. So if you had a motorized zoom lens, of which there were only a few, that it would maintain that zoom position when you turn the camera off and back on again. Turns out that it is a, it, that it applies, possibly also applies, but primarily applies to focus. So I've been, when I used to use the GH4 for my live broadcast stuff, every time I turn the camera off, it lost focus, I turn it back on and I have to refocus it. Now I had a, a remote control on a really long extension cable so I could sit down like I am here, push the button with face detection, locks in my face and I'm good. So it was not a big deal, but I had to do that every single time after I turned the camera on. Now with the GH5, you won't have to do that. And like I said, I think that might be in other older cameras, but I couldn't find the menu in the GH4. I might've just missed it, but, um, but that's what that function does. So if you see the lens position resume, it's for focus. So remember that. Um, important little thing we haven't looked at, inside of the card bay on the GH5, there's two dual SD card slots. There is a tiny little LED next to each one that flashes as it's being written to. And this is extremely important because one of the things you can do is shoot carryover shooting. So when card one fills up, it automatically starts recording to card two. This works for stills and for video. Now video, it will seamlessly end one file and continue it on the next card so that when you drop them onto your timeline, Final Cut Premiere, whatever, they all come together seamlessly. This allows for virtually infinite recording because not only can you go from card one to card two, once card two is recording, card one is not, you can pop out card one while card two is still writing, add in a card three, and then when cards two is done, it'll flip back to slot one, now with card three in it, and continue. So as long as you have continuous power, and of course there's power sources for the GH5, then you will be able to have infinite recording to the card, and you can swap out the cards at any time. And like I said, the LED will tell you which one's being written to, so you don't make a really big mistake and pull out the card that's actively being written to, because that would be bad. So super happy about that. Um, let's see here. And this is a little bit uh, inside baseball for the higher end video shooters, but here's something that I, if you know the difference between shooting in degrees, shutter degrees instead of shutter speed, um, you probably already know this too, but just in case you don't, I'm gonna put this out there and for those who are interested in this sort of thing. So you can, you can switch the GH4 and the GH5 to shooting in shutter speed for video or measuring it in degrees, shutter degree. And this is a 360 degree is a circle and you can set it uh, anything really in between. For an understanding of how the degrees are measured, why, what it means, Wikipedia that, that it goes back to the days of film. But the point is that 180 degree shutter is essentially, is uh, in the days of film, it would be exposing the film for half the time. When you're shooting video, 180 degree shutter is ideal. If you're shooting, uh, if you were to think of it in, third, in uh, uh, shutter speed, if you're shooting 30 frames per second, then a 60th of a second shutter speed is ideal. Well, if you're shooting 24 frames per second, then a 48th of a second shutter speed is ideal, but that doesn't exist in the camera. You set it to degrees though, and you can do a 180 degree shutter, which is half, and that is the exact double the speed, that is exactly what you want. And the cool thing about putting it in degrees is you put it in 180 and no matter if you change your frame rate, when you go into um, high speed, 180 frame per second, you don't have to change your shutter speed to compensate, just leaving it at 180 degree shutter always gives you double the shutter speed. So really, really cool equivalent. So really, really cool thing to know. Again, if you shoot sh uh, degree shutter, you probably already know this, it's like a duh obvious thing, but um, I didn't realize that and that was just one of those kind of aha moments for me. So hopefully that's a bit interesting to you guys. Okay, uh, the different movie modes. You actually let's take a quick look at the comments while this is going. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, lots of comments came back through. And oh, and Sean's in here. God, Sean, thank you, brother. He's coming in. It means that he's in the meeting going, it's time to do something else. And he's adding some comments into here. So he confirmed the 180 FPS is not limited. Thank you, Sean. And uh, Asher, I did not take off to the beach. I, I'm seeing a blank on mine too, but I'm here, I promise. And let's see here, uh, output's 100% capable of 422, oh, okay, so another Sean confirmation, the output is 100% capable of 422 10-bit 4K 60p over HDMI. So the full 4K 
60p, 422, 10-bit does go out over HDMI as well. Um, we knew that, but I guess someone must have asked about that. I think I missed, missed the question. Oh, and it's the, the, there's a confirmation. The name is in Arabic, so sorry, I can't read that. The question confirmation is that um, he's asking, is it full 4K or just UHD? For full 4K meaning the slightly, it's 40, 96 pixels instead of 38, 40. I think they got that right. Um, we'll see if Sean answers that. I, th I believe it does, but you have to have a reader that will read it. That would be the trick. Okay. Uh, let's see here. This is one of Sean, one of my better shows. Why, thank you, Sean. Um, okay. How do you fast forward? I have no idea. Um, I'm not texting back. I can't text you back, Ryan. <laughs> uh, first live stream, not so much action. Well, then people are looking at a still, still frame. Just refresh. Um, all righty. Let's see here. And I wonder if Joseph knows it's live. Yes. I'm very aware it's live. <laughs> Um, if he comes back holding a sandwich, okay, wow, wait, hold on a second. Is everybody, are you not, are you not seeing me? It's a good thing I'm recording this. Huh, fascinating. Uh, this is crazy. I mean, hold on a second. Let's, let's just see what's happening here. Huh. Well, no idea. I am going to continue just doing the show. Thank goodness I'm recording it. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, well. Well, I've been talking and answering chat questions. And answering chat questions. Oh, well. Just going to continue. No idea why the stream isn't working. Not going to start over. <laughs> Sorry. OK. Uh, all right, so let's get back to this. So that was one day to be shut. OK, movie mode. So you've got um, ABC HD, which is basically throwaway. Don't ever use that. MP4, MP4 with LPCM audio and .mov options. You would, the only ones you should ever be using are the MP4 with LPCM audio or the movie mode. And if you're using the XLR1, which is the XLR adapter that goes on top of the camera, that will allow you to get 96 kilohertz audio in. That will only be able to be recorded in the movie mode. So forget about MP4 entirely, put your GH5 in movie mode and leave it there. That's all you ever need. That's it. Those are the things I wrote down. So that's cool. Apparently I'm not live, so I don't know why... Um, I don't know no idea why, but thank goodness I hit record on the camera, so we've got this recorded. And that is where we're going to leave that. Oh, I wanted to show you a quick little line. Well, obviously not live since it didn't work, but the behind the scenes here, zoom out of this, and you can see this is just kind of the funny what you have to do in a hotel room to get a little bit of light, table lamp with the shade taken off, and uh, all the other lights on, trying to angle it in a way that's not totally hideous. Hopefully this isn't too awful. That light I didn't want super bright in the background, so zoom didn't pass that. Um, microphone is is a lav that is on a long extension cord. This is my Rode one that I usually use with my um, iPhone. It's got the TRRS port on the back for the iPhone that is then converted into a regular mini jack port to go into the camera with another Rode adapter. We'll list all these adapters in the show notes. And then what the part that apparently did not work is streaming through Wirecast, which I have no idea why it's not working. So let's see, streaming through Wirecast, it says it's good but it is apparently not. I also wanted to show you, nope, that's not it. Oh, I quit it. I was gonna show you the Final Cut timeline, but I guess not. And we're not receiving data. Well, uh, it says the health is good. See, I have no idea what's going on. And it says it's streaming, so who the heck knows what's happening. All right, guys, well, sorry that that didn't work out live, but for those of you that are watching it afterwards, obviously, you got it now. And this is totally not gonna be in focus now, is it? Let's see here, let's see if I can do a Casey Neistat thing here and switch this into auto. There we go, and Boom, there we go, now it's in focus. All right, guys, thanks a bunch for watching. Sorry that you didn't get to see this live, if you were trying. Thanks to the apparently massive amount of people in the chat room having a wonderful conversation with me answering your questions, but you not knowing that. And um, that's it. I'll be back in the studio tomorrow, back in Oregon. We'll see you then, bye-bye.